Hi, I'm Lottie, and today we're going to look at UK Parliament, its functions, and how effective it is at carrying them out. You may recognise this photo of the House of Commons down here, and this is the chamber that you're most likely to see in everyday life on TV. It's where most of the laws are made and debated. But Parliament is actually bicameral, and it has two chambers. So you have our elected chamber, the House of Commons, and our unelected second chamber, the House of Lords. Monarchy is also part of Parliament, but it's a ceremonial role. So you'll see the Queen opening and closing Parliament, appointing the Prime Minister, but she has no real power. If we break these chambers down then, first of all we have the House of Commons, our elected chamber where 650 MPs sit, each representing a constituency, and we can see two clear distinct benches and our speaker here. If you start with the speaker, he, he or she belongs to a party, is an MP, but they remain impartial as they need to keep everyone in check. You might remember John Burke's notorious orders. So they're there to kind of keep the house, keep everyone in line, make sure any debates don't go kind of out of hands any arguments or fights start, keep them all in check. Our current speaker is Lindsay Hall, who is a Labour MP, but as I said, they need to remain impartial. And then we have the government benches here. So this photo of the 2010 coalition, you can see David Cameron and Nick Clegg, and then their cabinet and ministers, so the executive making up the front line, and then we have our government backbenchers who don't have a role in the executive and are there to kind of represent their constituents. And then across from them we have the opposition benches, which is mainly made up of Labour but will also have MPs from other parties that don't make up the government, so like the SNP. So we have our opposition leader, their shadow cabinet and the opposition backbenchers. Whips are also part of Parliament and are appointed by the party to make sure all MPs vote on an issue with the party stance. So then let's move on to the House of Lords. So it is bigger than the House of Commons but it's unelected and therefore has less power and is our lesser second chamber. While members may belong to party there are actually three distinct types of membership. So we have life peers who are appointed by the Prime Minister or the House of Lords Commission and may be appointed for various reasons due to party loyalty, a long career, achievements or special interests. So for example, Baroness Doreen Lawrence, the mother of Stephen Lawrence who was killed in a racially motivated attack. She did a lot of work on police reform and racial issues in the community after his murder and she would give input on bills that may relate to this. Then we also have hereditary peers. So since the House of Lords Act 1999, they have been limited to 92. These are peers who, once they die, their title is then passed down in the family. They are inherited titles. And then we also have Lord Spirituals. So this is 26 archbishops and bishops of the Church of England. They're there to represent the main religion of the UK. So we've gone through the composition of Parliament. We're now going to move on to its functions. So we've got four functions. And then we've got a table as to how effective Parliament may be in carrying them out and how ineffective it is in it is for that, so we've got effective and ineffective for each function. So legislation, let's go that as the first function. So Parliament should make, amend, debate and scrutinise legislation. And in theory Parliament should be effective at this, as we know from the Constitution there's parliamentary sovereignty. Parliament can make and unmake any laws that it pleases. The House of Lords also has a big role in making bills, amendments, blocking them, vetoing them, as that's a part of the bicameral system, checks and balances. 
and the government actually suffered 14 defeats to the Lords with Theresa May's EU withdrawal bill in 2018. MPs can also make their own bills that don't have to be party bills and it may be their own special interest or a constituent's interest. So that in ways that Parliament should be effective in carrying out legislation. However, Parliament can be ineffective as most bills are government bills, especially if there's a majority for the government. These bills are most likely to be passed and made law. So in between 1997 and 2005, Blair had no defeats. There's also a lack of support for private member bills and time. If that one single MP is trying to get support for their bills and is trying to juggle that as well as their other constituents' issues, there's going it's going to take up a lot of time and gather less support and momentum. If the government also enacts the 1949 Government Act, the House of Lords can only delay a bill from one year and then it gets made law. So you can see kind of the difference of the balance of power between the House of Commons and the House of Lords. While the House of Lords can block, amend, if the House, if the government wants to make something law, it will. And then we have our second function, representation. So the Parliament should be effective at representation because the House of Commons is elected that is the whole point that you have an MP. We live in a, res a representative democracy and each MP should act on behalf of their constituents and the House of Commons holds more power than the Lords. However, Parliament is ineffective at representation as the House of Lords is unelected and still retains some power as we know from the previous examples. Also, first past the post does not reflect how the population votes. Over half of a constituency may vote for other parties and have not voted for the government, as only one vote is needed for an MP to win in that constituency to get over the line. So, for example, UKIP had a third of the vote share in 2015, but only had one MP. Also, the House of Commons is not socially representative of the UK. There's only 34% of women MPs, whereas they make up 50% of the UK, and the average age of an MP is 50. So the third function is scrutiny and accountability. Parliament should be able to hold government to its actions and make sure it's doing the best for the people that it's supposed to represent. So Parliament is effective at scrutiny and accountability as so there's various ways to hold the government to account. So there's PMQs, which you see every Wednesday, select committees, which are highly effective as they have a cross, as they have lots of MPs and peers from the House of Lords. They can also draw on different sources and they are able to question ministers. You also have opposition days where the opposition can hold the government to account and as we've seen we have the House of Lords where it can amend bills, veto them, block them. So as I said select committees and the departmental select, committee, select committees are particularly effective, made of members from different parties and when Rupert Murdoch, the head of obviously Sky, when he was part of in front of the Cultural Select Committee, he said that he felt very humbled because obviously they're questioning. But Parliament may be ineffective at scrutiny and accountability for a few reasons. So PMQs isn't an amazing way of holding the government to account. It's very rehearsed, it's called punch and duty politics, it's more of a show. As a Questions aren't really answered properly and the Prime Minister gets the questions beforehand so he can rehearse his answers. Also, select committees can criticise and they can have these findings, but they can't actually make changes. And then, again, if the government has a large majority or there's a weak opposition because of this, then they're less likely to be held to account or things be blocked and things be amended if they can get them through quickly. 
finally we have legitimacy so we the house of commons needs to make sure that the government is doing what it says for its citizens so the parliament is effective because the house of commons is elected it has the approval of the people and we've seen parliament plays a role in scrutinizing government actions for citizens however parliament may be ineffective when it comes to legitimacy legitimacy as the house of lords is an elected and democratically illegitimate Parliament is also prone to scandals, so you may remember the expensive scandals of MPs spending taxpayers' money on redecorating their second houses, overclaiming on food, and that can really bring distrust in the people. So there are our four functions. I hope you made it clear in what Parliament does, how it, what it's made up of, and how effective and ineffective it may be in carrying out these functions.